Good morning, everybody. Welcome yeah. to. Vale, si comenzamos. Sorry. Welcome to um, another seminar by the Instituto de Astrofísica de Andalucía here in Granada, in Spain. And today we will have the talk by uh, Professor Jose Miguel Rodriguez Espinosa, that uh, he is now at the Instituto Astrofísica de Andalucía, but he's coming from the Instituto Astrofísica de Canarias. He will talk about the International Astronomical Union. And um, uh, just for a brief uh, introduction of uh, Jose Miguel, uh, he was from uh, 1990 to 1921, senior staff astronomy, astronomer at the IAC, at the Instituto de Astrofisica in Canarias. And now he moved to uh, our institute here in Granada. He started in 1976 at the University of Zaragoza, and then uh, uh, he obtained a Master of Science in Physics in 1980 at the University of California in San Diego in the United States. Then a uh, doctor in Physics in 1984 at the University of Complutense, and in 85 uh, again at the University of California. His uh, main area of interest are active galaxies, star formation in galaxies, instrumentation, and the high set universe. He has more than 150 research paper and invited lecture in astrophysics. Also, uh, he was PI of a consolidated ingenio grant first signed with the uh, Gran Telescopio of Canarias. In uh, uh, educational activities, uh, he uh, has undergraduate and graduate teaching at the uh, University Complutense in Madrid and the University in La Laguna in Tenerife. And he supervised uh, also uh, six PhD uh, theses. Uh, he was vice president in, in the period 2000-2004 and president of in the period 2005-2008 of the Spanish Astronomical Society and member of the drafting panel of the Spanish National Plan for Astronomy. He also was founding member of the European Astronomical Society and Spanish Astronomical Society and now he is a general secretary of the International Astronomical Union and this is exactly uh, the topic of the, the talk. So thank you again, Jose Miguel, for uh, this uh, talk. And the floor is yours. Thank you, René, for, for the introduction. I don't know how to... And to advance. Click, click in the slide and then move. Click on? On the slide, in, on, the, on the presentation. There, yeah. Everywhere. With the mouse, click, click there. OK. So what is the IAU? The IAU tries to be the union of all professional astronomers to promote and safeguard astronomy in all its aspects, including research, but not only that, communication, education, and development through international cooperation. It was founded in 1919 and is currently has more than 14,000 members from 107 nationalities and 82 member countries. So the IAU has a strategic plan and this plan is what I will be talking about. So the goal a strategic goal of the IAU are led 
the worldwide coordination of astronomy and the fostering of communication and dissemination of astronomical knowledge among professional astronomers. Promote the inclusive advancement of the field of astronomy in every country. Promote the use, the use of astronomy as a tool for development in every country. Engage the public in astronomy through access to astronomical information and communication of the science of astronomy. And stimulate the use of astronomy for teaching education at, at school level. So the IAU tries to bring people together worldwide sharing astronomical knowledge among professional astronomers. And it does nine scientific symposia per year and one regional meeting per year. Besides that, a general assembly once every three years. For instance, in the picture, you have the, the, the general assembly in Prague in 2006. And this is the executive committee where Deborah Elmegrin is the president. The president elect is um, Gary Benz and the assistant astronomer, uh, assistant secretary general is Diana Warra. We have two secretaries, one that take care of the, the accounting and the other one, the, the database, and six vice presidents. You can see that Laura Ferrarese is a vice president, Daniela Lazaro, Yunishi Batanabe, he is on CAN, which is now organizing the, the General Assembly in Busan, Solomon Tecena, and Ilya Usoski and two advisors, who is the past president and the past secretary general. The IAU has nine divisions encompassing most of astrophysics. Division A is on fundamental astronomy. Division B is on facilities, technologies, and data science. Division C is on education, outreach, and heritage. Division D, high energy phenomena and fundamental physics. Division E deals with the sun and the heliosphere. Division F on planetary system and astrobiology. Division G is on star and stellar physics. And division H, interstellar matter and the local universe. And division J is on galaxies and cosmology. José Miguel, te has, has, has cortado el micrófono, José Miguel. Disculpe. So these are the division presidents for the current triennium, in which you can see that there are more women than men. Uh, the, the IAU is very concerned about that problem. You can see the this is for division A, B, C, D, H, etc. Te has dado el micrófono nuevamente, José Miguel, te has montado. Yes. Ahora. The IAU give each year a prize for, a, for, for the best thesis of every division. And you can see now the, the prizes of this year. This 
understand what happened. I, I don't know how to do how to do okay. But the, there are other prices, like the Gruber Foundation prices, which gives between 25 and 50 kilo uh, dollars for investigation. And you have here the, the recipients of several years, this is in, in, in 2017, 2019, 2018, 2020, and 2021, the recent ones. You can see that there are people from everywhere in the world. Finally, José Miguel, disculpa, me parece que, que no, la pantalla no la está compartiendo bien, porque seguimos viendo lo de Division, sí, ya está. Deja de compartirla y vuelva a compartirla porque está un poco raro. Okay. A ver. Compartir pantalla. ¿Mejora? Ahora va bien, sí. Ahora yo creo que sí. Bien. There is eh, another price which is the Cabley Prize, which is given for a whole career in astrophysics, and is given every two years. Nomination, by the way, are currently accepted. And you can have there, there some of the recipients of, of prizes like Andy Fabrian, Edwin Van Dysoek, et cetera, et cetera, Alan Good for uh, ionization, for uh, inflationary universe, etc., etc. Also, for some instrumentation like Jerry Nelson, uh, Jane Angel, etc., etc. And finally, the show prize, which is given to us outstanding scientists. For instance, this year, it has been Victoria Caspi and Chris Kobielutiu, for their contribution to our understanding of magnetars. Now, as I said before, the IAU has, uh, is careful about women in, in astronomy and in the IAU. For instance, there are four presidents that I remember now, like Katherine Cesarski from 2006 to 2009, Silvia Torres Painberg in 2015 to 2018, Ewing Van Dysoek from 2018 to 2021, and now is Debra Elmegrin from 2021 to 2024. And uh, the executive committee has some working group and this is reviewed. This is, and the reason is because the idea is to keep a, a close watch on, on these groups, like the women in astronomy, the union member, diversity and inclusiveness, dark and quiet skies, and global coordination of last facilities. But the IAU has also four offices. The oldest one is the Office for Young Astronomers, who is run by Itziar Arechaga, also from Spain, and although he works in Mexico. And it was founded in 1967 in Norway. The following I mean, the next one was founded in 2011 in Cape Town in the Office for Astronomy for Development. Then the Office for Astronomy for Outreach in 2015 in Tokyo, 
and the recent one is in 2019 in Heidelberg and is the Office for Astronomy for Education. I will talk a, a bit about each one of, the, of these four offices. The Office for Young Astronomer runs uh, graduate schools in, in general three every two years. This is an international tool for young astronomers at the level of master of PhD and is to be running since 1967. There are, I mean, the, the lectures is the oldest office and the professors are mostly from the local universities where the, the, the school is given, plus some other from abroad. They are very successful and they have some statistics telling that most people continue into astronomy or related field after the, the school. For instance, this is a picture of one of their school. You can see there Silvia Torres Painberg, who was the president at, at this time. Now the Office for Astronomy for Astronomical Development is, is sited in Cape Town, as I said before, it run a number of projects having to do with development. For instance, they have reacted very swiftly to the COVID and they, they've run some problems concerning science and development for the COVID, explaining the COVID, etc., etc. This, they have a number of regional offices and uh, now they are looking back at 10 years of activity. For instance, typical project includes telescope in Nepal, where a group of people use telescope for tourism, giving undeveloped countries a means for subsistence. Project related with the COVID, where people help rural, tri rural tribes understand vaccines. They have a, a YouTube channel in Urdu in Pakistan which is this. For instance, this is the telescope for all uh, in, the, in the height of Nepal. And as the SKO occupies part of South Africa, they institute a grant for one person from the Office for Astronomy for Development. And this person organizes a hackathon every year. Uh, in fact, the hackathons are very well concurred and people are very, very, very smart, really. This is where the Office for Astronomy for Development has centers in Portuguese, in, in Europe, in South and West Central Asia, in East Asia, in the Arab world, in East Africa, in Southeast Asia, in Southern Africa, in Western Africa, and in the Andean regions. Now, the Office for Astronomy Outreach is sited in Tokyo at the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. And the director is Lina Canas from Portugal, but the supervisor is Haideiko Agata. They run a, a network of coordinators for outreach. And this is some help for Lina Canas. And this is where they have uh, what they call NAEC. Which are, um, 
which are offices that help transmit uh, outreach to the local populations. For instance, the, the Office for Astronomy Outreach run a number of projects per year. They also issue the IAU announcement and, I, and they publish the Catalyst and the CAP journal. This is a, the number of, of places where they have outreach coordinators. They have one in Spain that is run by, by Amelia Ortiz in Valencia. Now, the, the more recent one office is the, the Office for Astronomy Education, which is cited in, he in Heidelberg at the House for Astronomy. It was established in 2019, although the signature was in 2021. Here you can see Teresa Lago signing the agreement and this is the director and the vice director of the Office for, for, for Astronomy Education. The main purview is to investigate astronomy education at all levels. They cater from National Astronomy Educator Coordination, NAEC teams, and so far, they had only in, in Italy and C Cyprus and Nepal, but recently few new, new NAEX have been added in Egypt, China, and South Korea. They run the, the show prize and the show workshop. The show workshop is on education of us because this is the Office for Astronomy Education. The IAU empowers women, inclusivity, and diversity. The IAU also has had the 100th anniversary and made a number of uh, activities throughout the world. For instance, around the International Day of Women and Girls in Science on February 11, 2019, there were 300 activities in, in more than 67 countries in which 20,000 women and girls participated. The IU also used astronomy for STEAM education, and this is a project in South Africa the Molo Malaba project, which is about educating girls for, for life. Excuse me. In the 100th anniversary, there were a lot of celebrations. There were more than 5,000 activities in 143 countries directly involved, involving from five to 10 million people and reaching indirectly about 100 million people. For instance, the pale blue dot activity got about 500 events in over 50 countries talking about global citizenship and environmental awareness. The IAU also is very careful about the professional amateur relations. Is aware of the number of, of amateur astronomers, know that these astronomers make valuable works and the IAU fosters the work that amateurs are doing. The IAU also published a, a Cambridge University Press volume for every, every symposium. And there is a 
a publication that is done in Tokyo, uh, which is called the IAU Catalyst, which is a revival of the IAU Bulletin. During the, the IAU 100 anniversary, more than 500 events were, were run in, in about 70 countries, in which a number of people, a large number of people engaged. Finally, the IAU is very aware of the environment of the environment. For instance, there is a climate change statement in the web page of the IAU and it's and, and it is in, and, and there is an upcoming cabli IAU multidisciplinary symposium on climate and climate change on planets. So the next 100 years, the computational power is going to explode. Machine learning, we are going to have the Rubin telescope and the SKA, which will be about 500 petabyte to start with. In the next 100 year, the common goal is to unify scientists. Joint facilities and big surveys will explode. Big data, access, archiving, analysis, new technologies, publishing standards, science policies, and diplomacy, science literacy. The next year, the next 100 years, the common goals are to unify scientists, joint facilities, and big surveys. Mm, the IAU is very careful about the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and knows that through education, people have a better life. Finally, there is the dark, the problem uh, that has been erased by the constellation of satellites, which is jeopardizing the view of the night sky, but also producing uh, interference for radio astronomers. And there, there are a few symposia that have been held on dark aqua sky for science and society. And there is a center for preserving this, the dark and quiet skies that is in the making. It has been awarded to the joint proposal by Noel Lab in Tucson, Arizona and the SKAO in Jordan Bank. It's, it's not signed yet because I received the, the memorandum of understanding yesterday, but it will soon be. The center will oversee the interference with optical and radio images by the constellation of satellite that is per pervading the skies. There are nowadays almost 10,000 satellites in low Earth orbit. The idea is to work with the satellite operator to dim the satellites and avoid radio interference. So this is my summary. The IAU is doing much more than astronomy. It has division, commission, and working groups. 
it runs for offices, for young astronomers, for development, for outreach, and for education. The IU runs nine symposium per dia, school, and regional meetings. You can get involved by applying to any division or, or commission. And the Center for, for Preserving the Dark and Quiet Skies, which is very new, tries to, to uh, implement all that, that we can in order to mitigate the effect of the constellation of satellite concerning uh, optical images and radio interference. And I finalize telling you that we are all world citizens under the same beautiful sky. And that is it. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Miguel. And uh, now the talk is open uh, for questions. Uh, I think uh, Anchon Alverdi, our director, uh, will have some words first. Anchon, please. Yeah, th thanks, Ronel. Thanks, Jose Miguel, for, for your nice talk. Um, let me just do, although we have done it several times here in our institute, make an official welcome to Jose Miguel, to our institute. Yeah, taking opportunity of, of this seminar. We are very happy to have him here. And I am sure that it will be a very good opportunity for all of us to, to keep and reinforce collaborations that we have already had with him before. And also it's also a very good advantage to have the IEU General Secretary here in, at the IEA. Okay, then, then welcome to the Institute and thanks for coming. Okay, then it's uh, time for questions, uh, please. Raise your hands in case you have a question, and then I will pass you the floor. I, I will start, and then all, they have, all the others have the opportunity to think about questions. That my first one, Jose Miguel, is about the, the political connections that have the IAU in the sense of, for example, once that you have prepared a document about preserving dark and dark and quiet skies or the, the problems, the, the already existing problems with constellation of satellites, uh, both in the optical and also the electromagnetic uh, contamination of the, of the sky. Uh, which are the, the connections that the IAU has with political uh, or with the decision-making bodies in order to apply this, this kind of suggestions, etc. Yeah, I would say mm, there is a, an organization that, that is called COPUOS, that is the organization for the uses of, of, the, of the sky for Pacific uh, uh, reasons. And there we have a person which is Piero Benvenuti, who will be the director of this Center for Dark and Quiet Skies. And Piero Benvenuti has prepared a document in which, uh, in which uh, he, he shows the, the problems that these satellites, the satellite constellation brings to a to optical and radio astronomy. And this is going to be discussed in the next few, few days. It has been, it, there is a process because this, everything that has to do with the United Nations have a, a process that is very long. But the, 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 the discussion of this paper that is that uh, Piero Benvenuti is bringing to the floor is imminent in a few days. And there, um, Spain has, a, has a, uh, supported the, the paper, Chile has supported the paper, and Czechoslovakia, I think, 
or the Republic, the Czech Republic has supported this. So the prospect for for approval of this document are very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Jose Miguel, also I, let me ask you if you could again show your presentation because we couldn't see before the responsibles of the different divisions. I think can be a, a good opportunity for us yes, to identify who are the responsibles, but it, it was at the time of your talk in which we couldn't see the, the slides, if you don't mind. No problem. Okay, here they are. These are the division president. Okay. Daniel Hestrofer, in order, in order, this is mm -hmm. for Division A, Division B, Gabriele Giovannini, Richard de, Gris, de Grais is for Division A, A. B, C, Isabel Grenier, Cristina Mandrini, who is from Argentina, Antonella Barucci, Andres Psra, Monica Rubio from Chile, and Kim Bin Trump from Vietnam. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, Pepa. I have uh, one curiosity because I I got confused in the last the last meeting of the IU about uh, about what is the role of the executive committee and the nomination committee. And the nomination executive there are, committee. That there are two committees. One is the executive committee, and one and the other, on the other hand, there is also a nomination committee. The nomination committee nominates the, the president and the general secretary of the well, in terms. Every few year is the the nomination committee acts to nominate uh, these people. Mm. Okay, and and I have another question. This is uh, because, uh, well, I, from you, I I suggest uh, Jose Miguel to give this talk because somebody in a in a meeting in the institute asked me. Uh, Tell me why I should become part of the IAU. Uh, and so um, I, I translate this question to Jose Miguel. I suppose that uh, you have seen there are so many things that have uh, that normally IAU is doing, but, uh, but uh, I, I like that Jose Miguel translate a message to young people, why they should become part of the IEU? Well, there is an office for young astronomers and they are very active, I, I must say. Why the young people should become member of the IEU? Because it doesn't cost them any, any money. It's the country who pays. And I think there are a lots of opportunities for young people in, for getting prizes, division prizes, and then many other things. So I encourage you to apply for membership in the IAU in the next, the next call for for applications. Okay, okay thank you. Miguel, and the other, the, the other question that arose uh, in that meeting was uh, about the role of technical people. 
people who work are in engineers and uh, if they are welcome to participate in this uh, in the organization or not that i don't know but i think they should be member also of the of the iau i will bring this question to the next meeting yeah i think it's very important yeah yeah okay thank you jose miguel nice talk i enjoy a lot <laughs> thanks pepa then guillem Sorry, who, who was Guillermo that? Guillermo Anglada, have you raised your hand? We cannot hear you, Guillermo. Okay, since we, we cannot hear Guillem, let me just make a, a, a very quick question, Jose Miguel. Which are which will be the next uh, uh, general assemblies for next year? Is we have one this year, and then and we have one this year. Yeah, which is postponed from twenty twenty one. Yes, we still don't know whether it will be in person or not. Mm -hmm. We have a meeting next on the first of February to to decide because because Tenía in South Korea the situation is not very good. Okay, and and the next one is also decided where it will be. Pardon? Then the next one and the, the, oh, one the next in one is, is going to be in South Africa. South Africa. In Cape Town. Uh -huh. In 27 is also decided. In 2024. Yeah. The one in 2027 is being decided these days. Uh -huh. Okay. And the Guille contenders are St. Petersburg in Russia, Tel Aviv in Israel, Rome in Italy, and Montreal in Canada. Uh -huh. Okay. Guillem, I think we can hear you now. Yes, yeah, sorry, I had the, the microphone on my computer off. Sorry. Uh, I uh, thank you for the talk, uh, Miguel. Uh, and I, uh, I wanted to comment regarding the young people and regarding in particular to the Peter Gruber uh, Fellowship Postdoctoral Award that we missed this, this slide because of the, your screen got frozen at, at that time. And I, I wanted to comment it, to comment that uh, this is something that can be, can, can be very useful and in particular in the first or second of their calls the the award comes to the iaa in particular to Mayra osorio uh, that come here with one of these this peter gruber awards uh, i do not remember well the the year it wasn't announced in the general assembly of sydney and then uh, a few years later it came to to go to the went to the ice ac and so i think uh, a couple of times it can uh, it uh, came to the spanish institutions so i think it's it's worth to to mention this yeah no the gruber foundation prize is very well coveted because it gives you uh, some money for research and, and there are very, for instance, this person here is from Latin America. This person is also from Latin America. This is Indian. And I think this one is also from Latin America. So there are, there are some people that are Spanish speaking people. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot, Guillem. Okay, I think that there are no more questions. Then, Jose Miguel, thanks a lot. And oh, yeah, th there is another one. Excuse me. Please go ahead. 
there is a question about Bethlehem. I don't know who you are. Okay, we, we cannot hear. Okay, then Jose Miguel, let, let me thank you again for the talk. And then um, uh, Rene, we, we can close the seminar whenever you want. Okay, thank you, Anchon. <clears throat> and yeah, thank you again, Jose Miguel, for this uh, talk. And thank you everybody to being here. And I hope you and wait you here next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.